Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou School Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about inspiration, leadership, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is the general manager of the very popular Giovanni Pastrami restaurant in Waikiki. She is Marissa Komomua, and today we are going beyond restaurants. Hey, Marissa, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Aloha, Coach Rusty. Thank you for having me. Marissa, you have been such a great leader for Giovanni Pastrami, and I mean, the culture of excellence that has been building is absolutely incredible. But first, Marissa, can I ask you, what are in the restaurant industry, what are the various jobs that you've had? Okay, so I first started there in 2008. Um, I was a host for a few weeks, and then I was a server for two years. And I worked only in the morning. Our menu is so expensive, and I had to it was so busy in the morning too, you know, so I had to learn really quickly. And then I was bartending for maybe about 13 years. And then I became the director of marketing. Ryan um, asked me if that's something I was interested in. And I, I was so excited. And I said, yes. And then a year later, he asked me to be the general manager and I couldn't pass it up the offer. Um, and then when I became in that position, I had to learn how to do everything. So from the back of the house to working in the dish pit with everyone and being on the line and making pizza. And I enjoy doing it. So, Marissa, right there, what what is it about the restaurant industry that you love so much? I would say it's all the people that come in and just seeing everyone having a good time there and I would be there if I didn't work there, you know, and it's just so nice to see familiar faces. And after COVID, just seeing everyone just come back again, it just felt really good. It feels good to just take care of people and watch them enjoy, eat good food and just talk story. Yeah, and I, I agree because, Marissa, I, I know you for a while now, and, and you are such a positive person. You have such great positive energy. And Giovanni Pastrami, I mean, it's such a fun place. I mean, everybody loves to go there. The food's great. Uh, great games on the TVs. Um, when you're hiring new employees, new team members, what do you look for um, in hiring somebody new to join your team? What qualities? Um, I just want them to be outgoing and smile a lot. And I always talk about our... Uh, culture of excellence, superior culture of excellence. And um, talking, I talk to them about how long I've been there and how much they can grow as a person and just being successful there. And it can happen. Um, I just bought my home maybe like a, two years before COVID. And it was a huge accomplishment for me. And I'm still there and I'm growing and just Giovanni Pastrami is so awesome. I'm, I'm so glad Ryan took it over. So Marissa, do you, so you look more for the character of the person versus the skill, is that correct? Yes, that, that's correct, the attitude. So just, they can grow from that, you know, and Ryan also was teaching us about skill, you know, attitude and skill and then knowledge. So we're all I growing. totally agree. It, it's all about that character, the, having the right attitude, the right effort, the, the right work ethic, and then you can teach people how to do the job. And Marissa, what, what do you feel as GM, what do you feel are some of your strengths? Um, I'm a people person. So when I go around and talk to people, I'm very comfortable with it. Um, I like to ask them where they're from and just see what's going on if it was their first time there and a lot of people have been going there for almost their whole trip they'll come eat breakfast lunch and dinner you know um so pe talking to people the second thing is just being I can help everyone out 
So if they, if they need help on pizza, if they need help washing dishes or the host needs help, I'll be all over the restaurant helping out with everything. So I like to multitask and um, yeah, just everything. I enjoy no, it. You, you do it all. I, I see you. <laughs> I see you doing it all. And, you know, that's a that's a great quality of a leader because you're you're leading by example. I can see. You know, if there's a table that that needs to be cleaned up and you're walking by it, you'll clean it up. I mean, if there's a dish out of place, you'll take care of that. I mean, if there's somebody that's if the hostess stand is busy and you're right there in the front, you're taking care of the guests. Um, that's that's really what a great leader does, Marissa. And I want to ask you, I know that you've had a ton of adversities in your life, whether it be professionally or personally. But what's what's one big adversity that you have faced? Um, just I feel like learning, being in this position and learning to communicate with people and understanding personalities is really, you know, it was hard for me. But now I'm understanding how to talk to people. And in your book, you talked about the four misses, which I really hold dear. Like I every day, even in my life you know, miscommunication, misunderstanding, misperception, and misinformation. I really think about it before I, you know, make my moves. Marissa, I'm impressed right there. The four misses. <laughs> That's awesome. And Marissa, you've been mentioning Ryan. So just to clarify, Ryan Tanaka is the owner of Giovanni Pastrami Restaurant. Um, Marissa, what, what are some things that you admire about Ryan and what are some things that you have learned from him? Wow, that's, I'm learning every single day. And you know what, I'm so happy that he's my mentor and my leader and he's so incredible. He has so many different businesses and he takes the time to meet with us every week and I meet with him every week and he's just so inspirational and I don't know how he does it, but just all this multitasking, I'm enjoying that. Like I said, I like doing the same thing and he's taught me so much. I can't even, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> well, so Ryan bought Giovanni Pastrami 45 days before oh. the pandemic. And mm -hmm. I mean, we know how many restaurants have closed because of the pandemic. And Giovanni Pastrami uh, not only survived, but is starting to thrive. What, what are some of the reasons why you feel uh, Giovanni Pastrami survived through the pandemic? Ryan just took the wheel and we went, you know, we have so many new things that came up. And so we had a, a new POS system, toast, and then he, um, we got a new pizza oven, and he just started inspiring all of us, and it was so, it was rough in the beginning, and it was scary, but once we got back and we came back as a family, it it was became you know, what oil, the oil machine, you know, and it, it, it just kept going, and he did, he's doing such a great job with everyone, and every, the whole staff is just, you know, happy. Well, yeah, you know, he's a people person like you. And and did you, I mean, you guys are doing DoorDash and Bite Squad. And how are you servicing some hotels in the area as well? So Ryan's created a, a partnership with all these hotels. And so they, or we have an online ordering that they can QR code. And we do so much takeout ever since COVID. And our, we finally got it down because it was it's like a new position in the restaurant. Um, just quality. Everything needs to be quality. And, you know, we even put a insert in there saying thank you, just personalizing it from Giovanni Pastrami. And it's just all these little details that really matter. And that's what, another thing that he's been teaching all of us. And in addition, he's the master of finance. He's so brilliant. and. And Marissa, the community now knows that he's the founder of Brotherhood Grinds and Sisterhood Grinds. And I was there in the beginning in that first meeting with uh, Ryan, uh, Timmy Chang, and myself because 
you know, Ryan was donating my books and, and that's when brotherhood grinds and sisterhood grinds started. Now you can see the governor, Josh Green comes, uh, Mayor Rick Blangiardi, a lot of our community leaders are invited by Ryan to participate in brotherhood and sisterhood grinds. How important is that um, for you and your entire team to be helping UH Athletics and the community? Oh, the team is so excited. I mean, doing these events, I can't even, you know, explain because this is what we do as our profession. And just to see how they are so happy and you're a part of the community and this. And we, I have different servers that work it every time and they just enjoy it, you know, and just being there and just helping the community and having the career development program. And it's just so amazing. It's just for the future, you know, and we we love being a part of it. Yeah, and broad, just to clarify, Brotherhood Grinds, it's not just the restaurants providing a complimentary meal for the players and the coaches. Mm -hmm. Ryan has set up a networking situation so that the players can meet community leaders to actually position themselves for life after sports. And we just started the third year this past year, as you know, and this past week. Um, and I want to ask you, Marissa, in terms of um, Ryan, I mean, he has such great character. He has donated my books um, to countless sports teams, uh, schools, and organizations. He, he's donated my both of my books to, to the entire UH football team, the UH men's volleyball team. I mean, he is so, um, has the heart in the right place to really want to make Hawaii as great as possible. And how does that, his energy transfer to you and the rest of the Giovanni team? He's an inspiration to all of us. And just him donating your books to us was huge. I mean, I have the staff read it. You know, they all have a book and you personally signed it, which was even more nice, you know, and it, it was such a nice gift that this, your books don't just, it's not just for our job. It's even our personal lives that we can even, you know, grow on. And there's so much great chapters in there. I, I can go on and on. So I'll always open it and read it. And I'm so happy that he gave us your books, you know, and it really inspires all of us, you know, and every day. So we just had our Christmas party and you were there and it was such a great, you know, that was something that was different and it was a beautiful, beautiful Christmas party where we talked about gold standards and just that's the, we're, what we're moving towards now. And it's just so exciting. And just our new goals for 2024. And Marissa, I know why you get emotional when we talk about with Ryan because of, you know, how he's helped you and, and so many of your team members. Um, earlier, you mentioned about my books, about the four misses. Mm -hmm. What are some other concepts that stood out to you in the books um so one of our first meetings we've had ryan asked if a flower doesn't grow and why and then i thought about it and then i was like okay no water you gotta like you gotta water you gotta there's sunlight and then he talked about it being the environment so when i opened your book and it was in chapter eight beyond the lines i was like oh okay I started reading it. I was like, oh, this is where it came from, you know, and I was just inspired by it because it's our garden, you know, and we want all our staff to grow in there. It's just so wonderful seeing the camaraderie and like bringing that back. And he's done so much for us, you know, with Brotherhood Sister with Grinds, Pop Mini. I can go on, you know. And what about Beyond the Game? Did something st stood out to yeah. you there? So Beyond the Game, Chapter Two, Coach coaching versus teaching a coach is a teacher who inspires a person and that's exactly what Ryan has been doing for us the management team and the whole staff you know and that's where I am learning you know and I, I just watch and listen and just so excited every day Marissa I'm impressed that you really know the chapters as well like where it's located that's that's awesome and Marissa you you also do a lot of catering 
um, what is it that that you love about doing catering for various events? Um, so there's a few catering events that we do for like schools, um, even visiting team specials. And it's just so nice to have them come to Giovanni Pastrami and, you know, and we also do golfing tournaments, not just in the restaurant, but we do golfing tournaments. Um, we'll go to UH and then we pass up pizza and, you know, um, it's just nice to meet new faces, new people and just, you know, be out there. Yeah. And Marissa, what's great too, I mean, the, uh, the popularity of Giovanni Pastrami, I mean, it's, it's growing in, in amazing ways. I mean, I, I remember the NFL uh, cheerleaders coming to the restaurant and uh, being so excited to be there. And then your staff, I mean, your team members are just so excited to meet them. And, and the other guests were excited and Super Bowl champions, actors, I mean, other famous athletes, they all come into the restaurant. So why is it popular? I mean, why is it more popular than other restaurants in Waikiki? It's, I would say the staff, you know, and they just have people coming in and they're just enjoying their time and people are hearing about Giovanni Pastrami and just the brotherhood and sisterhood grinds. That's a huge thing that, you know, that Ryan's created like these NIL agreements and we we just love being a part of it. And it's, it has grown since I first, you know, started. And this is never, this is something that we've never experienced before. Oh yeah. No, it's, it's totally new. I mean, it's, I don't think it's been done anywhere in the United States for, you know, college athletics. But, you know, I, I think for people when they're thinking, oh, you know, these restaurants, I mean, it, the first year it started with four restaurants. And now in this third year, it's grown to 24 restaurants and over 50 sponsors. And during the event, hotels are giving complimentary nights, which the players, if they win it, their parents can come from the mainland to watch the games. Or Alaska Airlines is giving a free round trip ticket for two anywhere that Alaska flies. I mean, you, you're you there. You see all that excitement. And then the players and the coaches are like, wow, this is amazing. And yet they're sitting at tables with, you know, these community leaders of, you know, successful CEOs of businesses or incredible nonprofit organizations. Um, I, I'm excited every time I'm there. And then Ryan always asks me to speak and and it's really because I was there at the beginning and he and I, we work closely together. And, and um, I think he's just, I mean, everyone in Hawaii should be so proud to have somebody like Ryan to really inspire the community. And Marissa, I want to ask you in terms of team bonding, I mean, it's so important when you're the leader of a team to enhance team bonding and to do activities together outside of work and to keep things fun. How, how important is that for you? I feel like that's number one, you know, um, our team bonding, it really matters and just everyone smiling and, you know, and having a good time. That's, it'll, you, you know, knit to when we're at work and we just, everyone sees it you know, and they enjoy it. And that's what I enjoy. Everyone sees that we're a family, you know, and we're working together. And Marissa, I want to ask you um, about teamwork, because whether it's in sports or business, you have to have incredible teamwork to be successful. And for me, when I came in to do the keynote speaking for your holiday party, you know, I, I stress the importance of when a guest comes in, the most important person they see is the host or hostess. Um, and they are the reflection of the rest of the company or the restaurant. And then the next person is the server. And then it could be the bartender. It could be the manager. It could be the cook who doesn't even see the guest. How do you get everyone 
working together and having peak performance every day? Uh, we started um, having these gold standards, you know, um, and then everyone has a role. And the team Bonnie, we make it fun. So everyone's helping each other, especially in the front from the host, you know, and that's what I love about like the staff and everything. They've been doing such a great job, even the back of the house, you know, we're all laughing while we're doing it. And, but we still have these standards, you know, that everyone needs to take care of. And when, every time someone comes into work, we always say, welcome home. That's like our thing. It's just a cute, you know, thing to do. And everyone just loves being there. Yeah, and it, it has to be, you know, like your second family, you know, outside of your primary family. I and mean, that's that's just how it is if you're going to have a great team or a great organization. Um, and Marissa, Ryan bought Giovanni, um, he bought CJ's and Roundtable Pizza over a year ago at the Hilton Hawaiian Village. And you work really closely with their leadership management team. Why are they having success, you know, greater success in just such a short amount of time? It's all Ryan, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> there, and I love working with the other management there too. You know, all of us are really close, all from CJ's round table to Giovanni Pashami. So the whole management team, we all work together and it's so nice to go back and forth and talk about what we need to do and work as a team, you know? You know, we're a restaurant, Giovanni Kishami restaurant group. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it's incredible. And everybody loves round table pizza, right? Yes. Oh my gosh. It's so good. <laughs> well, I, I need the King Arthur Supreme. I mean, I mean, that's, that's one of my go-tos. And, and Marissa, you know, a lot of businesses, a lot of companies, um, they're struggling to really get employees and that's affecting their business. I mean, Giovanni's you you have every position filled. I mean, why is that and how good is that uh, knowing that there's so many other restaurants that are struggling in that capacity? Right. I just it's so great um interviewing people have been coming in and just walking by and I asked them if they've ever, you know, how they found out about Giovanni Pastrami. It would be on TV or, you know, just walking past, hearing about us. And it's when I interview people, it's their character in there. And I'm choosing the right, you know, trying to choose the right candidate for the position. And, you know, it's, and our team is great. And Marissa, that, okay, let's go one step further now is employee retention is a huge thing for businesses because oftentimes there's a lot of turnover. Um, it seems like at Giovanni's, you guys have very low um, turnover and great employee retention. Is that because of the culture that's implemented? Is that, I mean, I know that you're trying to show that you care and that you have empathy for everyone. and I mean, is that one of the main reasons why? For sure, that, you know, it has to be the number one thing is that empathy, how we care about each other and the culture of excellence. Like you said, like the books you gave us and we're reading it, this pertains to Giovanni Pastrami. We, that's our, our book, you know, that that's what we go off of and everyone's enjoying their time there, you know. And you know what's uh, what's amazing, Marissa, and this is just to add on to what you just said there, you know, there's some other companies that are using my books, um, you know, for, I mean, all of the employees have the books and they're using it as a playbook for their company. And the reason is the CEO wants everyone to get the same message and they want everyone to be striving for that same superior culture of excellence and that the employees can hold management accountable and management can hold employees accountable for everything that's in the book. And, and the books, as you know, it's all about character. It's all about teamwork. It's all about mindset. And Marissa, you know how difficult it is for everyone on a team to really come in with the 
greatest attitude every day. I mean, it's hard because sometimes yeah. you're not in the mood. And I always say, if you're not in the mood, get in the mood because that's what it takes to be successful. What are your thoughts about mood and attitude? I mean, you mentioned attitude earlier, but, but how do you get everyone into the right mindset if they're not in the right mood? And I can tell right when they walk in the door who's having a bad day, who's having a great day. So I'll just pull them aside and ask what's going on, you know, and, you know, we're here to, you know, do our job, take care of our guests. And, you know, you have to be smiling and you have to be, and I try to see what's going on and try to just navigate the conversation. And if they ever need help, I'll, I'll help them, you know, and, we can talk about it later, but right now we need to, you know, work, you know, so. And Marissa, I mean, we, we know the importance of really the, the essence of building relationships is when you build trust and respect and trust and respect has to go both ways. How important is it for you to take time when you see one of your team members kind of struggling that day, and then I know that you have a ton of responsibilities to do, but then you'll still take time to really address and make that person feel cared for or to try to find out what their situation is. So how, how important is it in it to really build that trust and respect? It's very, very important. I mean, that relationship you have with every staff member really, you know, you want to see them grow and you want to see, you know, in life, things happen here and there. And we're here as a family. And I just want them to know that I'm there for them and whatever they need. Um, even all of us, the whole management team, you know, and we work so well together and everyone has their personalities, right? So they'll go, you know, they have to go to multiple managers and we kind of have our own opinions, but we all get it through together and that's where the trust comes in, you know? And that's why it's so important to be on a team. And if people feel like they're truly a part of a team, then they can open up and really be honest about what they're thinking and feeling. And for you as a leader, you want to know the vibe and the pulse of what's happening. And you're not a mind reader. And that's why you welcome, you know, to try to have your people share about what they're thinking and feeling so that you can make sure that everything keeps moving in the right direction. And that's what I did as a coach with my teams as well. And that's what I'm trying to inspire you know, the world to do in, and, and then in my mind, the world's going to be a better place. And Marissa, I really want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today to really share insights and um, really keep up the great work. Thank you, Coach Rusty. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit rustykomori.com and my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Marissa and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Mm -hmm.